Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Well, what would you think is your most important item of fishing equipment? Is it the rod? Is it the reel? Neither, actually. It's the bait. The most important thing you can have when you go fishing is the bait. And to get the right bait for the right species also helps quite a lot. Now, in freshwater, we can use the humble earthworm, or I think they call it across the pond, the night crawler. Sounds like a mass murderer, doesn't it? A night crawler, but that's what it is. I think in America they call them that. But same thing, it's an earthworm. But in salt water, we've got a couple of good worms over here, the lugworm, but a better one, and it's got serious attitude in the shape of a big pair of pinches that come out and nip you, the ragworm. They even grow to big sizes, called a king ragworm. I got in touch with Wayne Combin, our small boat guy. He goes fishing for shore and from boat. He's down there digging some worms. He's gonna run through, give you a few tips, and look, you can get down there with a fork, get some good exercise, and get some free bait as well. Let's see what he's up to. There's something extremely satisfying about digging your own bait, taking it out fishing, and actually catching fish on it. You're out there in the fresh air, down on what we call the foreshore. Obviously, you've got to work your tides out and make sure you arrive on the spot at low water. Gives you the benefit of getting the best exposed areas for digging. So here we go. Let's see what Wayne has to say and what sort of tips he's going to give us about digging the ragworm. Okay, this area is very, very well dug. Um, looks like a SOM, in fact, in places. Uh, a lot of commercial diggers get here. What you've got to be particularly careful about, this, this will go for any um, estuary or, or harbour where you're trying to dig for worm. Um, be aware of what's underfoot. What happens is someone will dig a trench. The tide will come in a couple of times. Now, that trench, you, you won't, it will fill with soft mud, particularly in this area. Underfoot, you're walking along, suddenly you think it's firm ground that you're walking on which it is all of a sudden bang you go down to your knee literally in claggy mud more than one person's been caught out in this harbour um, and it had to be pulled out by the uh, rescue services so just be aware of where you're going what's underfoot of course check the tides um, and tell someone where you are uh, better still go with someone else okay well Obviously I'm not a professional uh, bait digger. What I am is a hobby digger who likes to dig some bait, mostly try to keep myself a little bit fit. It's not really working at the moment, but I'll keep trying. What we've got here, a little bit closer into the land, is the maddies, the small harbour ragworm. Now they're ideal, perfect for the likes of golden grey mullet, um, obviously the smaller species, uh, thin lips like them, uh, uh, red mullet like them as well, so uh, they're a very handy bait at times, especially for the match fishermen, they absolutely love them. What you're looking for is a little tiny pinholes on top of the mud, and I'll take a spit over and we actually should be able to show you some. There we go, rich ground. You'd, uh, you'd like to have smelly vision here, because it's pretty, uh, pretty funky stuff. Now, in the top here, you can see all these little tiny ragworm, all in the surface. All these little tiny tunnels is where they uh, move through the mud. Might not be able to pick them up, because they are a very, very small thing. And that's what you're looking for. Very small little harbour ragworm. There you go. Hopefully you can see that little red vein straight down the centre of it, which will identify it. Now clearly, not really targeting huge fish with these, although no doubt if you put enough on a hook, a bigger size fish will quite happily take them. But there you go, harbour ragworm. And if you get a rich area like this, in no time at all, you should be able to dig plenty of them because they're quite hard to spot. So you turn over a bit of claggy mud like that. Now there's one there, for instance, I'll pop him back. But if you have a look in there, there's another one sitting on top of the uh, mud there. And um, all around this you'll see them. They'll be sitting in this mud everywhere, absolutely everywhere. I'll see another one just sitting in the side of the mud there. Just trying to break it a little bit easier for you to see, look. Absolutely alive with them. Absolutely alive with them. There you go. So 
very very useful bait these as I say particularly for the match fishermen they'll pick up lots and lots of little species and uh, things like golden grey mullet as I mentioned they go crackers for those this particular area is uh, sort of quite a quite a compact mud uh, mud shingle bits of stone in it if you go down a bit about a foot and a half you'll hit some chalky air ground it's a lot lot harder the professionals here do big huge long trenches I certainly don't have the fitness for that but what I do is come along I look for the bigger holes on top of these patches of mud turn the ground over and uh, hopefully that's where you'll find the, the bigger ragworm which is uh, the ones we want for um, the likes of flounder uh, place bass and all the other species that like a bit of ragworm I had a nice big ragworm first turn over and I've lost him. That's a tip for you, that is basically. As soon as you turn over a spit, if you find a nice big ragworm, then what you need to do is get him quick. Otherwise what'll happen is he'll be gone. He'll be absolutely gone. And that one unfortunately broke up a little bit, which is a hell of a shame. So that's just his tail, but that would have been a good size ragworm. Obviously a wide tined fork is what you need. But in this sort of ground, you're going to have a few breakages because it's a very tight packed ground. Sometimes when you turn them over, you'll have no choice really. You'll find bits and broken bits of worm. Don't put that in. Don't put a broken worm in with your other worm because basically they don't like it um, and it will kill them a lot, lot quicker. If it's raining, take something to cover your bucket. Don't want fresh water getting in on, on these ragworm. Again, it will kill them pretty quickly. If you can, what I like to do, get myself a bit of weed maybe a little bit of uh, grit off of the beach even a little bit of the clean sea water and I like to put them in that just to keep them um, now as I say I'm only really digging a pound of rag maximum for my days fishing I'm not doing it professionally the professionals will have a much much better way of keeping them um, they sort of have uh, aerators and all sorts keeps them alive for a long long time what I have found is that they really don't like is uh, big temperature changes so if you can keep them at a steady temperature uh, cool obviously not not freezing that'll do that'll do for them but if you can keep them at a steady cool temperature um, they'll last a lot lot longer okay what we're looking for here are the better worms so there you go you're looking for that sort of thing nice ragworm there make a lovely bait single bait for a place or something similar they get bigger here you can get big big king ragworm head hook one of them and uh, put that in the run you get a very good chance of a bass but uh, beautiful bait ragworm, very underrated. Not a lot of fish uh, won't take a ragworm. Um, oddly enough, some of the bigger smooth downs from the beach come on uh, the nice, uh, you know, good hook hook size of, uh, of, of worm. So uh, yeah, I mean, there you go. That's what we're after anyway. Decent size worm. And if you can get yourself half a pound, pound of those, give you a very good chance of a day's fishing. Well, as I mentioned earlier, this particular area you've got a top soil of uh, top mud if you want to call it of um, stony sort of claggy mud now the reason is because uh, this was once uh, a, an area where a lot of sewage was pumped out for many many years so uh, obviously very rich in nutrients that's why it was a bit of really good worm area I believe they no longer do that but of course the ground particularly the top of the ground is, is well this, we know what it is uh, and if you were here to smell it you know exactly what it is but uh, it's very very rich but underneath as I pointed out you've got the absolute um, original ground which I feel which is that whiter more chalkier uh, and a lot harder denser ground now the worms the bigger worms in particular can burrow down in that I'm not going to dig it it's just for to, to try to get some uh, a few bigger worms I'm just going to take it nice and easy and take the top off and find out where all those uh, average size worms for what I want where they live just check with your local tackle shop as to which areas that you can dig worms you can't dig normally around any boat moorings well that's obvious because the boats will float away but check out where you can and where you can't dig just to be on the safe side because I'm just a hobby digger I've basically got a uh, well have a look six pound fork right well it does me because I'll break I'll go for them like nobody's business but it's adequate for what I'm doing so we look for those holes 
Look for the nice bigger holes. Don't look for the cast. If you look for the cast, what you'll find in there are those. Blow lug. Ragworm don't leave a cast. They just uh, go down into the mud through their tunnels. So basically what you're looking for is the holes in the top. The bigger the holes, I tend to find the bigger the worms. So if you look for some nice decent sized holes, and now we're digging on the higher parts of this mud here at the moment. This stuff's already been dug before at some stage. The trench will probably be here, and they've put the mud over here. Over a period of tides, the higher patches are where I like to dig. Slightly easier digging, and it's still a very rich environment for worms. And uh, in fact, Graham found one a moment ago with his first turn of the fork. So uh, in, the, in this spot, in this spot. <laughs> So once you start digging, I mean, I dug over, turned a couple of worms over, called Graham over to show him. I've dug, you want to dig in the same spot. Where there's one worm, there's often more. So basically, that's why the guys trench, because it's a lot easier to turn a, a spit of dirt over or mud over where you've already took one out. So in other words, you want to go like so. And if you're doing it properly, keep it all one side. Another one, turn it over, keep it that Whoa, side. Oh, holy cow, it's a snake. And that's what happens. You find the decent worm sitting in there. Nice boy, him. Almost make two baits, Wayne. Well, if you're fishing for certain fish, you'll make a lot more than two baits. But if you want to get a, uh, a bass, you'd head hook him and just um, trot him out with a very, very light weight. In fact, if you could trot free line him out, even better, somewhere in a nice bit of tide. Over the back here is a couple of uh, beds where you've got a little gush of water. When, it, when the tide comes in, it gushes through. Well, if you can free line one of them through, the bass are on the other side of it, of course, waiting for everything to come in. They see that come past, I think all their birthdays have come at once. Obviously, one thing to remember, backfill your holes. No one wants to do it, of course you don't. You broke your back digging it, please backfill them, all right? As you can see, it doesn't happen a lot around here, but I think it's it's just a good policy. I mean, uh, ideally, I wouldn't like to think of anyway. A kid coming here, maybe, I'd, I was digging worms here when I was uh, 10 years old, uh, so, you know, I'd like to think that if a kid come here digging, he's not going to fall down the hole and it's going to be something I've left. So, back for the old fellas. It may seem like a bit of extra hard graft, but if you don't want to lose access to a beach, just take the time to knock the worst of the sand back into the hole. Okay, well, we've been here literally 10 minutes, no more. Um, I ain't got much more 10 minutes digging left in me, to be fair, but you can see what we've got from 10 minutes digging. It's quite nice selection of worms there. Some are bigger than others. Got a few uh, individual baits there. Got a few smaller ones. So, in all, for 10 minutes digging, that ain't bad. So you can imagine here for an hour, you should be able to get yourself a good pound of ragworm. And I mean, what's the cost of the shop nowadays? I suppose between 10 and 15 pound, depending on where you're buying it. Uh, some of it isn't always the greatest, Nick. I'm not down, uh, dissing tackle shops in any way, shape or form. I buy plenty of worm from tackle shops and in the majority of it's very, very good. But there's definitely a certain satisfaction of uh, going out, digging it yourself, and uh, tying your own rigs, catching your own fish. All done yourself, can't beat it. Right, now these worms, I'm just gonna have a couple of hours fishing uh, on my own if uh, the weather holds. Um, now, if I'm just gonna fish with them that day, then really all I'm gonna do with these worms, find myself a bit of weed, cover them over. No worries, that'll do me. But, a couple of little tips, don't overcrowd them. If you get a few decent worms, don't pack them all together. Keep the dead ones and all the broken bits away from uh, the good worm, because it, it will kill them quite quickly if you do. Um, and what you want to really do is, as I say, keep the temperature level. I mean, I don't personally free, uh, fridge my worms anymore. Even in the summer, I don't do it. I find a cool place, which is uh, usually down the bottom of the shed. I get some newspaper. Soak in seawater. I'm mean, going to usually take a nice bottle of seawater with me. That I'll put in the fridge to keep the temperature low. And I'll lay the worms out in a shallow tray and I'll cover them with the newspaper uh, soaked in, in, uh, in seawater. And that basically I'll just come along every now and again, change the paper, and uh, that does actually keep them alive. I mean, in my experience, it's kept them alive for three or four days uh, with no issues. Um, of course, you can keep them in the fridge. The trouble with that is I find that sometimes you buy worms from the shop and they've got them at a certain temperature. You put them in your fridge, it could be colder. They really don't like it sometimes. You know, I've took front worm out that were healthy when I put them in and the next day they've not been in, in great nick. So shallow trays is the way forward for me. Another, another tip, um, grit. Now if you can pick some grit off the shore, nice clean sea grit, 
put them in that. I'll tell you what that does, that firms them up lovely because at the moment these worms are literally like oil. You pick them up and they will slide and slip them through your fingers. They really are slimy. You put them in that grit and it just firms them up nicely, makes them a lot easier to hold on to, feed on the hook.